Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show. For you guys that are brand new to this channel, my name is Joe Jaguar. And um, okay, so let's start with the name. Uh, first, my last name is actually Agriar. If you put a J in front, you got Joe Jaguar. And that was a name that stuck with me since I was 17 when I was in a garage band and I was the drummer. So that's where I got that name from. And I've had that name, again, since I was about 17. But anyway, so I've been in the hobby since about 1993. I have taught and co-taught a few public schools, uh, maybe even a Catholic school, and once uh, co-hosted in a, a university for one night. I started this YouTube channel about uh, three years ago, and that's who I am. So anyway, I also worked at a store for several years, a uh, part-time, uh, just to help the community out. So I uh, probably have used, I would say, at least close to 150 telescopes, if not even up to 200. But anyway, uh, I just want to thank all the new subscribers that have subscribed lately, plus two thumbs up to all my subscribers that have been with me from day one. So today I have two starter telescopes. One is a good entry level telescope and one I would say is a better uh, 80 millimeter. So both of these guys are 80 millimeter acromats. Um, now for you guys, if you're going or if you're thinking of purchasing something like a 50 millimeter refractor, forget about it. It's garbage. If you're thinking about 60 millimeter refractor, it's almost garbage. Now, I have tested a 70 millimeter that looks like that, Celestron Power Seeker 70 in 2019. I would consider it borderline. Then they have the short version, 70, don't even bother. So I, you should start minimum. I've always said this on this channel, start with an 80 millimeter refractor. That's when things are gonna start to look good. And even people who get bigger telescopes, a lot of times they're disappointed because they look at the internet, they look at pictures uh, that they see on computers and magazines, and they don't see that in a tele telescope visually, and they're disappointed. But anyway, this is where you need to start for refractor sizes, is in the 80 millimeters. Beginner, uh, decent uh, beginners, 80, and then a better version, 80, and we'll get to it right now. Okay, so let's start with this guy here. This is the Celestron 80 millimeter power seeker. Now I have used the short uh, version for many years and I love it because it's wide field, it's portable, it's light um, to capture those huge wide field uh, things. It's, it's really good for that. But anyway, this one is a long tube version. But anyway, I think the 80 millimeter here is actually a pretty decent um, uh, scope um, type of thing, rings, uh, red dot finder. Now this red dot finder I think is a bit better than some of those cheapy, cheapy red dot finders. Now the eyepieces that come with it is the Kellner uh, series and even the Barlow. They're kind of uh, the eyepieces. You can play around with it for a month or two or whatever till you can upgrade it. I would suggest a Palazzo or Super Palazzo. I have a video called eyepieces from the worst to the best. Take a look at it if you want. Now, where the company tries to skimp out a little bit, or maybe skimp out is not the right word. What the manufacturer wants to make a decent scope at a decent price. Now we're talking about today in 2022. Uh, you're looking at this guy, let's say Amazon, for instance, it's about 255 Canadian. I always talk about Canadian in my channel since I obviously know my money. And um, uh, so it's about 255, but there's taxes. It's about 286 Canadian for this guy. So I think the telescope is actually decent. It's a long format, so it's gonna give, be pretty clear. Uh, images are gonna be pretty good. Uh, inch and a quarter focuser. Um, again, the red, uh, the red dot finder is okay. The diagonal is one of these round ones. It's okay, but uh, I guess for this, Price telescope is okay. Now where they cheapen a little bit is on this mount here. So it's an EQ1 um, 
mount, which is the lowest one. For you guys that are brand new to this hobby, EQ1 means exactly an equatorial one. And it goes by numbers, so EQ1, 2, 3, 4, 5, goes all the way to 8, that type of thing. So this is the smallest of the equatorial. So they're trying to save a little bit of money for you guys, but the problem is it really it's, it's borderline. For, make sure all these screws, nuts, and bolts are finger tight as you can put it. That will help uh, type of thing. But, you know, it does have a lot of play on this guy uh, type of thing. But slow motion controls on both sides, thin uh, EQ1 legs. So this is kind of where this part down is where they try to save money. So uh, that part is not the best. If you can get one on an EQ2, it would just help this guy uh, visualize but everything comes down to money and if you guys are kind of tight on money and you want a refractor this might be all you could afford you could do that later on you maybe could upgrade to a 90 uh, 100 millimeter 120 something like that then i guess that's okay now let me just push this guy a little bit here this guy this one's called max vision but it's a duplicate of Explore Scientific, which is a good name brand. Now, again, the 80 millimeter, uh, it's a long version. I believe it's, uh, what is it, uh, 900 millimeter focal length. Uh, so, the again, images would be pretty clear, pretty good. Uh, this one, as you can tell, has a handle. So, that's a bonus feature that you do not see. On, uh, actually, a lot of telescopes don't have that. You, if you want a handle, you're probably going to spend about 30 bucks at least for a handle, so it comes pretty good. Now, this finder scope is the one I was mentioning before, where it's kind of like the cheapy one. Uh, I consider these ones to be like lower quality than that one, but I think in both images, or both scope, the images are gonna be very similar. I don't think this one is better uh, quality than this one as far as the telescope is. Um, the focuser is okay. Uh, inch and a quarter as well. This one's a bit rough. Um, the diagonal. Now this is where this one does cost a lot more. As we said, two fifty five uh, with taxes about two eighty six. This one Canadian is f about four hundred and eleven dollars Canadian with tax. You're looking at about four sixty ish. Um, and where you're paying that extra money is on this part here because I don't think there's really well besides the handle. There's really no difference in the scope. But if you see over here, uh, this is, they call it like an EQ3, um, and it's just a lot bigger. So um, it has steel uh, tubing legs instead of aluminum, but you know, this is only like an inch uh, steel tubing legs. It still has lots of flex on this guy. So the mount is better. Also, the big improvement that they're giving on this guy is the eyepieces. Now, if you watch that video again, the worst eyepieces to the best. Um, so this one's coming with like a, a Kellner's, which are kind of like three lenses with a 52 degree of field of view. Now, I would say the next up as far as eyepieces would be a Palazzo, then a Super Palazzo. So this one's coming with two good quality Super Palazzo eyepieces, which is two levels better in the eyepiece. So you will not need to upgrade the eyepieces for this guy at all you get the handle so overall this guy this guy here is about 200 bucks more and so you're getting better eyepieces you're getting a handle and you're getting a better mount but really i don't feel like the tripod is too much better than this guy especially at this height there's just a lot of play but it is some improvement as far as the mounting is concerned um and this one does have the vixen uh head where this one uh, does not. But uh, besides that, I think they're very similar. Um, okay, now I wanna show you guys the head, or sorry, the mount side by side. That way you can kind of see why this mount is much better than this mount. Okay, as you guys can see, the EQ1 is pretty thin if you look at the overall construction here. And then if you look at the EQ3, look how much thicker that is comparing to, uh, you know, there's really, there's really a big difference between that and that. And that's where I think a lot of the money you're, you're paying for is that part 
versus that part and the extra eye pieces you get the handle i don't think the scope is going to be better quality or the image is going to be better in the white one than the black one but you're paying 200 dollars more so you guys decide for your budget uh what you want you want a decent 80 millimeter or you want just a better version 80 millimeter again the the drawback of this guy is i think this tripod it's almost the same i would say or very close i think this top part of the tripod is actually decent so i think that top part of it is decent but as it gets down here it becomes so that i think that's about an inch and this becomes like half an inch and i think that's where a lot of the play is and you can just see it when i kind of move it I mean, you're paying 200 bucks more, but if they would just improve the tripod, it would be, well, maybe then it'd be a lot more, but uh, price-wise or uh, to use it would be a lot superior. Okay, now, even though you just heard that this is a better version of that, this is still good if you guys are considering, as I said at the beginning, if you're considering the 50 millimeter, 60 millimeter refractor, forget about it. If you're even considering the 70 millimeter power seeker, I would say it's on the borderline. The short version is even worse. So I think, you know, again, even though this has its downfalls because of the mounting, uh, if your budget only allows to go to here, I would say still get it um, because you could do a lot worse in astronomy than, than this guy. Um, so uh, I still give this one, a, a one thumbs up because the telescope and the finder scope uh, eyepieces are usable for now can be a little bit better but they're trying to keep the the, um, the price a little bit down it's just this tripod and mount and the eyepieces where the it kind of goes a little bit down but besides that it's not too bad if you're uh, can't go any higher than 300 bucks I guess on the used market it'd be cheaper but anyway like comment and subscribe if you know anybody that's on the forums and they uh are asking about a answers to maybe a video like this uh what's a good entry telescope to get their kids or christmas or birthday uh send them my link and why not you why not me